Welcome to Final Element Methods Abacus Tutorials. I'm Leonardo Raque, a PhD student at UCLA, and we guide you through this tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is to approach the contact problem in Abacus. Two parallel cylindrical rollers will be modeled. The dimensions for the cylinders are on the left of the screen with the corresponding material properties. We will try to prove the high calculations for the compressive stress, equation 3.66 on the right of the screen will match um, the numerical solution of this problem. To start, let's go to Abacus and start the modeling. As a first approach, we will consider a 2D model. For this purpose, let's go to the module part to create a part. This is a 2D planar deformable shell. Let's set the approximate size for the grid as a uh, 50 millimeters. And start by um, drawing the small cylinder. So the diameter or the radius for the small cylinder is 10 millimeters. And now doing the same procedure for the bigger cylinder with the radius 16 millimeters. We'll have the two parts, part one, part two. <clears throat> Let's verify the dimensions. We will go to tools, Curie, for Curie, let's set a distance. Let's pick this two points. And at the bottom of the screen, you will see that the dimension, the distance is 10 millimeters. So for part one is correct. Let's now do the same verification for part two. Sixteen millimeters. Okay. I did this verification because a first glance look and the two parts look the same for me. So now we can continue to the module property to assign the material properties. This is a steel, uh, the, both rollers um, are steel, are made, are made of steel. So 210 e to the 9 or 210 gigapascals for the Young's modules and 0.3 for Poisson stretching. We now we create a section in the same module property, solid homogeneous, and we toggle the plane strain, stress um, strain box. So we only have free material, so we don't have more choices. Next step is to assign the section to the part. We toggle um, here and now we select the part. Let's start with part number one, just to make it in order. So we select the part. Um, now the section number one will be created. It turns green, so that's a good sign. Now we will repeat the same procedure for part two. Let's go to assign a section, select the part. And next step, uh, the only section created will, should be displayed in the um, uh, edit section assignment dialog box. So just accept it. Now we have the two parts has been assigned, a section has been assigned to both parts. Right, next step is um, the assembly. So for the assembly, we first need to create an instance. We create, select both parts and we create both dependent instance. 
and we're going to use the translate um, instance uh, feature in this model to translate one of the rollers. So uh, for this purpose, uh, I'm going to select the smaller one. To do that, we can go on the top and remove and click uh, on remove selected. At the bottom, select the entity to remove by instances. Okay. Okay. Um, I remove the instance. Um, I want to remove. Uh, I want it to remove. So uh, now that this is done, we select the instance to translate, which is the smaller one, right? Once this is done. We select the point for translation. So um, we could select um, any of these of the points in the in the part, right? However, um, to facilitate um, this um, this translation, let's select this point for now. The center. Um, there's a mistake here. Okay, one second. Starting point is going to be in the middle. Good. And the second point is going to be on the, in the, on the, on the other instance. Good. So, yes, let's replace all the instances. All right. And let's um, select. Um, Let's give the coordinate, that will be the case. So we want to move this um, in the y direction. So the total distance should be 26 uh, millimeters. Okay, perfect. So it worked. Just accept the proposed uh, translation. Okay, um, I need to do something else. We're going to um, partition the face sketch. Uh, to do this purpose, I need to get back because um, in this module for assembly, I cannot do it because of the selection, because of the dependent part instances I have created. So let's go back a little bit to uh, properties. We can do it here. So look for the partition face sketch and just draw lines along the diameter, as you can see. When this is done, the part can be is um when the partition is done, we can move to the to the partition for the second part by repeating the same procedure. Good. And then once we come back to the assembly, you can notice that we have the partition. This is for uh, feature use. All right, the next step is to create a step. So for this step, uh, we're gonna create um, a step in the module a step. The module a step is a static general. So in the create a step dialog box, under procedure type general, select static general, then continue. In the edit a step dialog box, Toggle on for the nonlinear geometry. 
So we can account for this um, nonlinearity in the geometry for the problem. Now, in, this, in the same uh, dialog box, look for the tab incrementation and set the initial increment size as, as, as 0 0.01. So pretty much the maximum number of increments to reach convergence would be 100. And the parameters um, for this incrementation are the initial, minimum, and maximum increment size. If convergence is not a shift, I mean, to, to achieve convergence, we should stick under these parameters. Otherwise, um, the job will be aborted due to non-convergence. Next is to accept the conditions we have created and move to the module um, interaction. In the module interaction, we're gonna simulate the friction between the two rollers. So the two rollers, we first need to create an interaction property. Interaction property is contact, right? We can name this as a contact, right? So in this dialog box, in create interaction properties dialog box, select the type contact. And in the edit contact property dialog box, select mechanical, tangential behavior, and the option penalty. For the option penalty, we will input 0 0.2 as the friction coefficient. Next step is to create the interaction. To create interaction, uh, we can uh, name it, let's say contact again. The interaction will be applied in the step number one, in the step one or at the initial. So let's select initial for the step. And make sure that the selection under types of selected step is surface to surface contact standard. Now continue. One more thing, um, to simulate the boundary conditions on, um, and the apply um, displacement or apply load, we're gonna create two reference points. So in this module, select reference point and locate the first one at the origin of the small cylinder and the second one at the region of the second of the larger uh, cylinder the largest cylinder now we have two reference points and in order to relate to create a connection between these reference points and the instances and the parts we need to create we need to create a constraint so go to constraint we could keep the same name constraint and select the type tie. <clears throat> so the master surface, um, so we have two options to select the master, uh, the master type. Could be a surface or could be, or could be a node region. This time we're gonna select a, a node region. So select node region, all right. And to select the points for the master nodes, select the reference points. Right, as you can see, the two reference points turn red. So that's a, that's a good sign. Now, done. To move to the next step, which is selecting, is um, selecting the slate type. So we get back to node region, but this time we're gonna select the nodes located at the origin of each of the cylinders. So let's remove the reference points to facilitate the selection. So if we click in remove selected, 
the two reference points uh, will be removed from the selections because they were already selected and we have access to the middle point in the part. So select the first one on the top, the origin on the top, hold shift and select the second origin for the roller at the bottom. And then click done. So as you can see, the master surface are identified, or in this case, master points, nodes are, is, are identified by red color and purple for the slaves, for the slaves ones. Right, accept the rest of the conditions. And to see the reference points again, you can click on replace all. All right, once this interaction has been created, we move to the module load. In the module load, the first step is to create a boundary condition. So the boundary condition, number one, um, under a step initial, would be completely constrained for the largest um, roller. So under types for selected step, select symmetry and symmetry in Castry. As I said before, as I said earlier, we're gonna use the reference point number two to, to apply this boundary condition to the roller. So select this, click down, and toggle in cast The next step would be apply a load. This time we're gonna apply a prescribed displacement. So go back to create a boundary condition. This time select the step, step one. And under type of selected step, display, displacements and rotation. Select the reference point number one. And input the prescribed displacement, which is minus point um, zero, one millimeters and this way you will see that um, they apply the applied pre pre -described, prescribed displacement all right i'm missing one boundary condition for the um, smallest cylinder so let's get back and create this boundary condition so uh, the third boundary condition is related with the initial step. And under type, select the step, select displacement rotation, select the reference point number one, and then toggle displacement in the one direction. So it means that the roller the smallest roller will be constrained to move in the X direction, but will be allowed to move in the vertical direction. All right, when the boundary conditions and load has been, um, has been um, applied, we can move to the model, module mesh um, to mesh the parts, right? So um, since we are um, to optimize um, resources and minimize time, um, we're gonna focus our mesh in the areas around the contact points, okay? So for this purpose, um, go to seat edges, First, switch to part, and let's start with part number one. We select the entire part number one, and we're gonna um, select in, in the local seats dialog box, method by size, bias single, Right, 
Uh, for the minimum size, we're going to select um, 5e to the minus 5. And for the maximum size, um, 0 0.0025. Okay, um, I get a little bit confused, so I'm doing something wrong in this case. Let's um, cancel this and let's start again because I need to select edges in this case. I was confused with a second model, which is a 3D and it's a surface. So we need to select edges for this case and the edges to select are the two closest to the contact, to the point of contact. So we select those two edges, they highlight, they are highlighted now in red. Once we do that, we can, we can come back to the um, local seals dialog box, select by size, in bias, single. Again, input uh, for the maximum size, 5e to the minus five. And for the maximum size, um, 0 0.025. Check um, what are the, the the like the direction of the bias, and if you are not agree with that, so you need to select select, click in the uh, click on the edge where you want to modify the direction, and you want to flip the direction. Um, I forgot to do one more, which is this. Okay, now both, um, now that I flip in both directions for the bias and all of them pointed, are pointed to the same uh, contact point where we can uh, move to the next part. So you can see with these um, purple um, symbols that the mesh will be more dense at the location of the contact between the two cylinders. All right, let's repeat this procedure for part number two as well. So select edges first. Then method by size, by a single, the same collect is and sell um, input for, from the, for the previous uh, assignment are kept all we need to do is to change, to flip the, the bias. So we select that, this one. Uh, it's good. Now both are, oh, I did something wrong here because this, is, this cylinder is at the bottom, right? So it should be selected the edges on the top. So let me redo this. I need to correct this. So first, let's erase what I've I've been done. I've done, and let's redo it. Uh, I'm checking for all the correct. Um, inputs and directions. Okay, that's good. So <clears throat> next step is the selection of the element type. So let's go back to the part one, just to keep the order, keep track of what we're doing. And um, we select the entire region, right? And in the element type dialog box, select in the element library standard, geometric uh, interpolation order um, linear, and look in the family for the element plane stress. All right, we're using this condition to model this problem. Toggle uh, reduce integration. So the element we're gonna use is a four node by linear plane stress quadrilateral for this model. All right. 
So um, <clears throat> if we proceed to match the part, we're going to see that we have more elements at the bottom of, this, of the cylinder. Let's repeat the same for part two. Let's check first um, what is the element type. But let's, do, let's assume that we keep the same conditions and we'll, we're gonna verify this later. Just match the part. And something is not right. I knew it. So let's, let me see something. I just wanna see what was the selection. I did it kind of on purpose because I want to verify what was the element type we selected. So we have a CPS4 with a re a reduced integration. Okay, but this is not what I want. So let's um, um, unmesh all these areas. Okay, <clears throat> um, now we can go to assign element type. Let's select the entire region. We have a plane stress. We don't want to reduce integration. All the other conditions are fine. It seems like I, I didn't um, I didn't remove the, oh, okay. I know what is going on here. Okay, I know what's going on here. Okay, let's do the following. Uh, I didn't set, yeah. I didn't set a global seats for the, for the remaining edges, so, Let's set um, this um, global seeds this way. Okay, good. And le let's um, mesh again. Okay, that's better. I think what I did, it's fine now. When the mesh step has been completed, we go to job and we're gonna create a job, all right? So let's create a job. So this is a job in 2D. From the, for the model uh, number one. And now we're gonna repeat the same model for a 3D case, All right? So pretty much we're giving some thickness to them, to both uh, cylinders, to both rollers. So to do this, we go back to the tree, uh, right click on model, create a new model. Let's call this model number two. Or oh, actually, let's rename this as a model 3D. And rename the first model as a 2D. Probably I will need to create another job, but it's okay. All right, now we are in, more in, in, in the um, model uh, 3D. So make the selection of model 3D. Go back to part, module part, and create the parts. This time the parts are modeling in the 3D space. Um, we'll consider them as a solid, and we're gonna use extrusion to create this. 
So um, we can keep the same approximate size for the grid. This is surface with the smallest um, Let's start first with the with the smaller cylinder, whose radius is ten millimeters. And let's extrude this. Um, let's do just um, ten millimeters extrusion. All right, so this is the first part. Now let's repeat the same procedure for the second roller. Produce 16 millimeters. And same depth for the extrusion. Good. We need to move to the module property to input the properties like we did for the 2D model. And now we create a section in the same module property, section one. And now we create, we assign the sections, the, the same, the, the created section to both parts. So first for this part number two, we switch to part number one. And both parts are now, oops, both parts are now green, so section was assigned. All right, um, before, the first, uh, before moving to the assembly part, we're going to um, uh, create this um, partition, right? So um, yeah, so let's do the partition. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do different partition this time. So we're going to first to create um, some data plane for the purpose of the partition. So the data plane for the partition is um, going to be the plane um, YC and the plane CX. So let's do first YC, no offset. Good. And now um, XC, no offset. Good. Now we can move to the partition cell defined by cutting planes, right? And um, and we can make the, the profit selection. So hold on this icon and move to the selection partition cell using datum, datum plane. All right, now select the data plane. First, let's select this one, create partition, and then create the second data plane. Oh, I need to select the, the partition cells. So this and the one at the bottom too, both. And once I do this, I select the data plane. Right, so we partition the cell or the part in four parts by using the data planes we created, we have created, okay? 
Let's repeat the same procedure for core number two. So first step, remember to create a datum plane. Um, we're using the datum planes YC and XC. All right. And then we're gonna part do, uh, we're gonna create a partition using those data planes. So click on this. Um, let's select the first data plane. Let's create a partition. Now select both cells, both cells. Um, then and select the data plane to create a partition. So we're, we, once we completed this partition, we can move to um, We can move now to the next um, module, which is assembly, to create the parts. For now, let's create um, the two parts as dependent parts. All right. And now use again the translate instance feature to perform, to translate one of the rollers. So select the instance to translate. This time I'm gonna do different procedures. So on the right hand side, you can see instances, select instances, and select the instance you want to translate, which is the part number one. All right. Now we need to select the points for the translation. So select um, this point. And the second point is a point on the top of the largest roller. All right. If you out of it the view, we can see now the selection. Okay. So I show you two different ways, one for the 2D model and one for a 3D model to perform the same procedure, the translation of the instances. Sometimes one of them is more useful than the other one. Um, all right, so uh, let's continue with this. Now we're gonna create the steps. For the step, we're gonna use the same, um, in, in create the step dialog box, under procedure type general, static general. We're gonna select nonlinear geometry, incrementation, in the incrementation tab, we input the same 0 0.01 for the initial incrementation size. Now we need to create the interactions. This time the interactions are between surfaces. So, uh, the first step is um, to create an interaction as we did for the 2D case. So in this dialog box, select the type contact. And now in the new dialog box, select mechanical, tangential behavior, and friction formulation by penalty, and input 0.2 as the friction coefficient. All right, next step is to create an interaction. To create an interaction, we can give the name contact. The interaction, the step is initial, and under types for select the step, select surface to surface contact, standard. We need to select now the master surfaces. So what are the master surfaces? So I have two options to do this. Um, the master surfaces belong to the large cylinder.
sorry, to the to the small cylinder. I think I realized that I think I did a mistake in the 2D problem. So I we will probably need to come back later. Sorry about this. I got distracted. So um, okay, let's do this right. So let's move. Let's remove one of the instances. Remove select. Go to the selection. The select entities to remove and look for instances. Select the instance you want to remove. And now on the small on the um, smallest cylinder, select the surface. We know what this. Now select the master surfaces. So um, this is the master surface, the two master surface we are um, selecting. Now we need to select the slave surface. The slave surface uh, surface um, belong to uh, belongs to the larger cylinder. So let's um, replace the select. Oops, sorry. Remove the selected. So now we're gonna remove by instances this cylinder. We're done with this. So now we have access to the largest cylinder to select the slave surfaces. All right, this is done. One thing I forgot to tell you before was that uh, we didn't create, we didn't have more than one interaction property. So that's why I didn't stop by saying that uh, you need to make sure that the selection, the interaction property applied for this uh, interaction is, is correct. So we don't need to verify that for now, for this problem. So just accept. Now you can see this both. And if you um, replace all, you will see that um, both surfaces in, with those um, yellow squares it represent um, the interaction between, between the two uh, surfaces. All right, next step is we're going to um, apply the load, right? So to apply the load, let's start for the boundary conditions. So let's create a boundary condition and apply a, a completely constrained boundary condition for the larger uh, cylinder, largest cylinder. So let's go to continue. First, I'm gonna remove again uh, by eastern instances didn't do it. I need to select the instance and I want to remove. Or actually, I'm gonna do something better. This time to remove, I'm gonna use cells, taking an advantage of the partition. So I will remove this cell and the cell on the top too. Good. So I can have access to, and you know what, also let me see, um, I'm gonna remove, um, not remove, but uh, eliminate um, the data planes. It's kind of uh, difficult to follow. So in graphic options, no. Atom, um, show data planes, black. Okay, perfect. So this, oops, so in this way we can 
have better, um, we can follow much better um, the application of the boundary conditions. So to create the boundary conditions, we need to, um, we're done with, uh, by removing the, the entities. So the next step is to select the regions for the boundary condition. I'm gonna select this edge on the larger cylinder. And on that edge, I'm gonna apply I'm going to totally constrain that edge. And I'm going to do similar for the, for the other um, roller, but this time it's not completely um, constrained. Remember to set the step as initial. I'm gonna constrain this the displacement in the X and the C direction. And again, we're gonna apply a displacement, a prescribed displacement instead of a log load. So um, switch to step, step number one, in under, and click on displacement rotation, continue, select the same, edge on the top cylinder, toggle U2 and input the displacement, which is um, 0.01 e to the minus uh, three meters or 0.01 millimeters. It's negative, right? So um, let me edit in the boundary condition manager. That's the boundary condition number three. If we edit, we can correct the direction of the prescribed displacement. All right, so we have constrained, we have constrained the bottom uh, cylinder, totally constrained, and we're gonna, we, have, we, are constra we have constrained in two directions, the um, upper cylinder, and apply some prescribed displacement as well. So the next step is mesh. So to mesh, we're gonna um, we're gonna apply the same. Um, we're gonna see the edges similar similarly. Uh, to the 1D problem. So let's select the regions first. So um, we select These two regions. Good. We check with the direction. So first, uh, the method is by size, vials, single. Uh, minimum size is five e to the minus five and the maximum size is 0 0.0025. We need to flip the bias for some of them. So we select both. Now we can see that the direction is correct. Good. Um, and for the global seats, we're gonna apply 0 0.025. I want to do something else too. Um, this time I'm gonna see the, these two edges um, locally. 
So let me do this. I'm gonna select this edge on the back and the one on the back. With the same um, setup, all, we need, all what I need to do is to switch the direction, to flip the direction for the bias. All right, good. So now I, I have this element or this um, component, this part properly, properly um, see that so that's good let's go and mesh the part so let's go and select the element under element element library is standard and quadratic uh, linear interpolation we select the 3d stress element type uh, family and um, um, we're not using reduce integration. Um, we're using tetrahedron. So the element is a 10 node quadratic tet. Let's go to um, assign mesh control to make sure that we're, the selection is correct. So we're going to tets. Good. Now we're done. We can proceed to mesh the part. And this is how the part looks like. So you can see that they have a finer mesh around the contact surface. Good. We can repeat the same procedure for the second part, for the other part, part number one. For, for part number one, again, we need to apply local seeds first. When we are done, we make sure that the selection, the, all the parameters are correct, and we need to flip um, directions. So um, let's select which are pretty much all of them. Oh, hold on again. Okay. I made a mistake again with the part number two. So I need to change that. Um, all right, um, this is good. I thought I was working in part number one before, but I was working part number two, so I selected the, long, the wrong quadrants for the mesh. Okay, but for this um, part is correct. Now let's verify the element type. 3D, linear interpolation, no. I'm looking for quadratic, no reduced integration for tets. So we have the same element as before. Um, okay, that's pretty much it. So I think it's done. Let's select, let's uh, verify the mesh control the selection is TETS. Good. 
and then proceed to match the part. Good. So that that's that's correct. All right. So um, for this component, for this part, um, we created more elements than for the first one. I'm guessing why. Let me see the local seeds. I have five different local seeds. I want, I'm gonna reduce the, 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 the number of elements, okay? So I'm gonna decrease the global seeds, increase the, the global size for the global seeds. Good. And then I'm going to remesh the part. That's better. So, I mean, now we reduce to um, four thousand, almost four thousand two hundred elements from. So, if you see at the bottom. Uh, based on my first choice, were almost 200,000 elements. Now I reduce it to 400 elements, pretty much. All right, so that's that's good. Let me go uh, and re re um, to review the, the mesh for the second part, because it should be dense on the top, not at the bottom. That's the, that's the problem. So I'm gonna redo this, all right? So first, let me check for the correct, correct global seeds. That's fine. And I will need to let me do it this way. Good. Now I'm gonna select the correct um, edges. The parameters are pretty much the same. All we need to do is to switch to flip the directions. All right, so now all are pointing out to the same direction, are pointing to the same direction. So just, okay, let's verify. Yeah, it's fine. Um, let's verify the element type. Um, C3D10, that's good. Let's go to, <clears throat> sorry, let's go to the um, um, mesh controls and select and make sure that we selected the right depth elements. Now I think we are ready to mesh the part. Good. Now we have 10,000, almost 10,500 elements. All right. So mesh, check. Now we can move to um, create a job. To create a job, we're gonna call this job um, job two, unrelated with the model three, D. And um, we're done. I need to get back and check um, the the interaction condition for the 2D model, because I think I didn't select the right master and slave certain edges. So let me get back really quick and do it free. So in interaction, I need to go to create interaction, but this time to the manager, interaction manager. 
Oh, I knew it. I was something that was not correct. I create interaction properties, but I never create the interaction. What I did was create a constraint. Yeah. The constraint is fine, but I need to create now the interaction. So for the interaction, let's call contact again, this. The interaction is under a step initial, and we need to create surface to surface contact. So now we need to select the master surface. The master surface correspond to the upper roller. And the slate surface um, click first on surface and then select the edges. corresponding to the lower um, cylinder. So you can see that the master surface are identified with the red color, um, while the slate ones are identified with the purple color. So that's fine. Now checking the contact interaction property is contact. We don't have more options, so that's the only one. And Okay, all right, now we have the interaction between the two um, components of this assembly. So I think now we're good. Uh, just verify the mesh, that's fine. So I think we are ready to run both models. So we'll go to job, and I'm gonna run these models uh, parallel. So go to viewport, uh, create a new viewport, did I do it? Yes. And in viewport, select um, tall vertical. So the one on the left will be for the 2D model, and the one on the right will be for the 3D model. OK. Getting back to the 2D model, uh, go to the job manager. I think I need to uh, create again this uh, job because it's related with the model one and I renamed the model. So let's remove this one, create a new one, job one related with the 2D model. Now we have the two jobs to run and we can submit it. So we submit the first one and we're submitting the second one too. And let's wait for, for the results. All right, running the two models. Um, for the first model, for the 2D model, it was only less than a minute just to complete um, the, submission, the, the submission for the job. For the second model, the 3D model, it took eight times um, the time it took for the 1D model. And, it, and it's the number of elements um, are uh, significantly uh, higher compared to the 1D model. So let's see the results for all of them, for both of them. So first I'm gonna remove um, in common options, toggle free edges, so we can see much better the results for both. Okay. Now let's get start first with the two to the model. We can see that the maximum um, stress for me, this is a stress, is 1.16 into e to the nine pascals. While for the 2D model, we have very close number. The maximum is 
8.4 a to the 8 uh, Pascals. It's interesting that since this is a nonlinear problem, if in the frame selector we go one step back, we start seeing how the stress is incrementing this has an increment, but never reaches the same number um, that we see for the 2D case, all right? Let's get back for a little bit um, to, the one, to the 2D model. In the 2D model, the maximum stress as expected is in the contact area. As you can see, if we want to calculate, to make the hand calculation for this, um, for the contact stress, we will need the load, right? So what we can do is to find the reaction force. So instead of asking for the stress results, look for the reaction forces. And the magnitude for the reaction force is the reaction forces. Here is the magnitude for the reaction force. So um, the reaction force, if we take this reaction force and we plug it back in the equation I show you at the beginning of this video, um, you will obtain the same number for the contact stress as we got in this simulation for the 2D case. All right, let's get back for now, now to the 3D case. So the high calculation matches um, the expected uh, solution for the plane stress config uh, consideration in the 2D model. So let's see, um, let's get back to the contact stress. And in the contact stress, I'm going to remove um, the top part of the assembly. I'm gonna look to the contact area. So as you can see, we can observe similar features as we did for the 2D model. But the number for the volume stress is not as higher as the 2D case. All right? Now I'm gonna switch to a preview run I did before, okay? And in this previous run, I extend the length of the of the of the of the rollers to um I extend the length of the roller up to uh, one meter up to one meter no 0.5 meters and it took me like three almost four hours to complete um, the submission of the job. All right, so we can see by this comparison between the three cases that the 2D case is fair enough and um, it's fair enough, is, is a good way to solve um, this contact problem under uh, plane stress consideration. With this, I finished this tutorial in contact, about contact stresses.